أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى أما بعض فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا خذ الله ميساق النبيين لما آتيتكم من كتاب وحكمة ثم جاءكم رسول مصدق لما معكم لتؤمنن به ولتنصرنه قال اقررتم واخذتم على ذلك اسري قالوا اقررنا قال قال فاشهدوا وانا معكم من الشاهدين فمن تولى بعد ذلك فاولئك هم الفاسقون صدق الله العظيم and just recall when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from the anbiya from the prophets whatever i give you from the book and the wisdom and then comes to you another prophet confirming that which might be with you la tu minunna bihi you will have to believe in him wala tansurunnahu and you will have to help him qala aqrartum he asked do you accept وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكُ مِسْرِي And you take the burden of my covenant on you. قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا They said we have accepted. قَالَ فَشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Then Allah said, Be a witness to it. And I am also with you a witness. This is called مِسَاقُ النَّبِيِّينَ Just as we have the misaq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from all the spirits and souls of all the mankind. Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. Before coming in this world, when the only the spirits were created, not the bodies. At the same moment, from the souls and spirits of the prophets. Because when all the humanity was present at that time, the prophets, you know, they were also present in the form of spirits. So this was a special covenant that was taken from the prophets, which were to come in the world afterwards. That whenever I give you and I appoint you as prophet, prophets and messengers and give you some of my book and then the wisdom and sharia and so on, guidance, then after you comes another prophet and after him will come another prophet. So all of you must believe in him, support him, And you must help all the coming prophets who come after you. So this is actually being told to the Bani Israel and to the Christians. That you must accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he is now the last prophet who has come after Moses, after Jesus alayhi wa salatu wa salam. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّا بَعْدَ ذَلِكُ So whosoever turns his back to this covenant after this, فَأُولَٰئِكَهُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ So verily they are the people who are transgressors, who are rebellious in nature. أَفَغَيْرَ دِينِ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ Do they want to have another deen except the deen of Allah? أَفَغَيْرَ دِينِ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ وَلَّهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Although to him submits everything and every one who is in the heavens and who is on the earth ta'am wa karha willingly or unwillingly everything is obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even the worst kafir on this earth partially he is also submitting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
बिकॉज ही सब्जेक्टेड टू द लॉज ऑफ द नेचर ऑल द नेचर नेचुरल लॉज आर गवर्निंग हिज लाइफ ऑल्सो एंड दीज लॉज दे हैव बिन फ्रेम दे हैव बिन एनफोर्स बाई अल्लाह सुबहान अवर हार्ट इज बीटिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट लॉ नॉट इट इज नॉट बीटिंग अंडर अवर इंस्ट्रक्शन इट विल स्टॉप वेन देर इज द कमांड फ्रॉम अल्लाह सुबहान वाल सो एक्चुअली वी आर ऑल्सो obeying allah in that part of our life where we have no control over ourselves so everything is actually submitting to allah subhanahu wa taala willingly or unwillingly af ghayra din illah yaqul wa lahu aslama man fi samawati wal ard ta'am wa karham wa ilayhi yurja'un and finally all of them will be returned to allah qul amanna billahi now the like of this aya was there in the 16th section of surah al baqarah qul say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and say you o the believers on muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam amanna billah we believe in allah wa ma unzila alaina and we believe in whatever has been sent on us sent down to us wa ma unzila ala ibrahim and we believe in what was sent down to ibrahim wa ismail and also to ismail wa ishaqa wa yaqub wa lasbat and whatever was sent down for ishaq and yaqub and his progeny wa ma utiya musa and whatever was given to musa wa isa and whatever was given to isa wa nabiyun and whatever was given to all the prophets of allah mir rabbihim from their lord la nufarriqu baina ahadin minhum the same words we don't discriminate between even one of them wa nahnu lahu muslimun and we all submit to allah subhanahu wa taala wa may yabtaghi ghayra al-islam dinan fala yuqbal min and whosoever will seek any deen except islam it will not be accepted from him wa huwa fil akhirati min al-qasirin and in the hereafter he will be the loser he will be from among the losers كيف يهد الله قوما كفروا بعد ايمانهم how will allah guide the people who committed kufr who denied after iman now what does it mean it might mean number 1 that their hearts had believed in quran and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yarifunahu kama yarifun abnahum so as if they had believed but now their tongues apparently they are belying it they are denying it number 2 there might be some people who who some in some moments you know might have said so also from their tongues that actually we have read and there are traditions there are hadith to this effect that the signs of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are present in torah so whatever i could gather from it was that such people accepted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as prophet but they didn't think that it is necessary for them to believe in him he is prophet but it's not necessary we have our prophets we have our books as certain people even today say that if someone is a jew or someone is a christian or someone is a sabi etc etc the ayah that we read in the eighth section of surah al baqarah if he believes in allah if he believes in hereafter then you know his salvation is ensured this idea prevails in the minds of some people even today that all these religions the tauhid and akhirah tauhid al maad iman billah iman bil akhirah if these two conditions are fulfilled then you know the person will be salvated and he will have salvation on the on the day of judgment but this is wrong as i told you after the advent of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to have faith in muhammad and to have belief in muhammad is necessary absolutely necessary so that interpretation is not correct but here kafa yahdillahu qauman kafaru ba'da imanihim these people might have been under the same wrong impression this okay muhammad is a prophet but it's not necessary for us to believe in him for us it is sufficient that we we act upon torah we have the sharia muhammad also says that torah was from allah it is from moses moses was the prophet of allah but the prophet allah when we are following moses it's sufficient for our salvation so this mistake and notion might be there between the lines in this ayah 
وسلم Allah is not going to guide such rebellious people such evil doers ulaika jazaahum anna alayhim laanat Allah wal malaikati wan nas ajma'in these people of them there will be the curse of Allah and the curse of all the angels and the curse of all the all the human beings of the whole of mankind khalidin fiha and they will remain in that curse la forever لا يخفف عنهم العذاب punishment will not be diminished for them ولا هم ينذرون nor there will be any period of respite for them الا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك these ayat you know are very similar to the ayat number 160 to 162 of surah al-baqarah in the 19th section we had similar ayat in surah al-baqarah i am only referring to this thing so that that point that i gave you in the beginning that these two surahs are very similar to each other they go to form one pair of surahs to which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given a common name az zahra wain two very bright surahs of the quran illa allazina tabu min ba'di zalik except those who repented after that wa aslahu and they mended their attitude and advice fa inna allah ghafurur rahim for them Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. Inna allazina kafaru ba'da imanihim thumma zdadu kufran. But those people who reverted to kufr and non-believing after declaring iman after attestation then they they increased they, they went on increasing in kufr in disbelief lan tuqbala tawbatuhum their tawba their repentance will never be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ulaika hum al-dallun and definitely they are the people who have gone astray innal ladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar and whosoever commits kufr either he is kufr already he is kafir he is in kufr or he has become kafir after becoming muslim he is murtad innal ladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar and now if he dies as a kafir as a non believer falan yuqbala min ahadihim it will not be acceptable from one of them mil ul ard zahaban although he may be able to present the earth load of gold wala wiftada bi to to ransom himself from this punishment of akhira ulaika lahum azabun alim for them is a painful torment wa ma lahum min nasirin and there will be no helpers for them لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون you will never be able to reach the level of virtue the level of piety unless you can spend for the pleasure of allah those things which you love now you know the subject which was discussed in the ayatul bir ayah number 177 of surah al baqarah that is as if it had been condensed into very small form ليس البر ان تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من امن بالله واليوم الاخر والملائكه والكتاب والنبيين واتى المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتابى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب all this long you know ayah has been condensed لن لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون you will never be able to reach to achieve the position of virtue and taqwa and piety unless hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun you spend for the cause of allah you expend and give away those things which are which are very dear to you not the things which have gone out of use now they are useless for you they are old no those things which you love which you like which you adore which are dear to you wa ma tunfiqu min shay'in fa inna allah bihi alim and whatever you'll spend for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah knows it 
although you might have done so secretly without telling anybody as i told you the wordings of the hadith are when you are giving some alms some charity to a person whatever your right hand is given giving let not even your own left hand know it this is the highest level there should be secrecy in sadaqat e nafila additional sadaqat but zakah that is farz that is obligatory it has to be given openly but you know the additional sadaqat e nafila what we call the one should try to to keep it and conceal it and not to uh, to announce it kullu taam kana hillam bil bani israil all the food and does it mean the 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 usual food that was being used in the arabian peninsula all the food was permissible for bani israil for the children of israil illa ma harrama israil ala nafsihi except that which israil that is hazrat yaqub alaihi salatu wassalam he forbid for himself actually as i told you the meat of camel was not liked by hazrat yaqub alaihi salatu wassalam he decided not to use it so actually it was a personal choice personal like and dislike personal decision but then you know the bani israil thought that this is haram this is not permissible and they were objecting to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the muslims how how they are using how they eat this camel flesh this is haram in the sharia of musa so quran says no it has never been declared haram and here are the alfaz here are the wordings min qabl an tunazzala tawra this actually decision was taken by hazrat yaqub alaihi salam before the coming down of tawra Tawra was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wassalam about nearly 300 years after Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam in Tawra there is no injunction qul fatu bi tawrati fatluha in kuntum sadiqin now this is the challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving no bring forth Tawra and now read it if there is any injunction which forbids and declares haram the flesh of camel then your objection is okay but if there is no injunction in the torah then it is actually quran is giving the explanation it is it was not declared haram by allah subhanahu wa taala it was actually disliked by yaqub alaihi salatu wassalam he decided not to use it and his progeny thought that it is haram this is why you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was was forbidden when you know he declared a certain sort of honey certain type of honey He, he decided i will never take it allah subhanahu wa taala you know he then sent down those ayat which are in the beginning of surah at-tahrim ya ayyuhan nabiyyu lima tuharram ma ahalla allah lak why are you you swearing that you will not use and you will not eat something which allah subhanahu wa taala has declared halal and permissible for you because the same you know mistake could have happened with the muslim umma also then because an action of the prophet it becomes very important people take it to be law kullu taam kana hillan li bani israil illa ma harrama israil ala nafsi min qabl an tunazzala at-tawrah qul fatu bi at-tawrah fatluha in kuntum sadiqin so bring forth torah and read it if you are if you are truthful fa man iftara ala allah kadhaba mimma ala zalik who so ever forges a lie against allah or on allah after this then they are surely the unjust people qul sadaq allah say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah has said the truth allah has told you the truth fattabi'u billah ta ibrahim hanifa so you should follow the practices and the path of ibrahim who was away from all falsehood wa ma kana min almushrikeen and he was also not from those who associate any money anybody or anything with allah subhanahu wa taala as partners or equals in awwala baitin wudu'a lin nas illa allazi bi makkah verily and surely the first house that was built for people that is for worshiping of allah subhanahu wa taala is the one that is at bakkah bakkah and makkah is the same word two pronunciations of the same word bak you know bak and bakkah that was the word in hebrew language for city 
you have you had you know baal bak baal bak was the city of baal baal was one of their gods you know so they, they named that city city of baal baal bak so bakka bakka was the city and this is actually this has tur turned into bakka the only pronunciation changes in pronunciation the city is the same in the awwala baitin wudu lin nas al ladhi bi bakka ta the first house that was built for the for people that is for worship of allah is the one that is at bakka mubarakan that is the blessed one wa hudal lil alamin and the source of guidance for the all the worlds fihi ayatun bayyinat in that house there are very clear signs and one of those clear signs is maqam ibrahim that 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 stone which was the station for ibrahim when he was raising the wall of kaaba wa man dakhalahu kana amina and whosoever enters it he is in peace he is in security this tradition about baitullah remained intact even during the worst days of jahiliyyah there was shirk there was kufr everything but this was this haram you know this was a place of peace and security and tranquility if you could find the killer and murderer of your own father in that place the arabs will never touch him because this is the place of peace this is haram this is for amr man dakhalahu kana amina walillahi ala nas hijjul bayt man istata ilayhi sabila and it's the right of allah subhanahu wa taala over the people over the mankind to perform hajj of his house of his home of his house hajjul bayt man istata ilayhi sabila whosoever can whosoever can make his journey towards it whosoever can afford the journey wa man kafara here again you know the word kufr is used whosoever can afford taking journey and he doesn't commit and he doesn't perform hajj then as if he is kufr he is in the kufr he has committed kufr because this is farz and if you are not performing a, a farz not fulfilling a duty that has been assigned by allah subhanahu wa taala it means you are denying allah subhanahu wa taala you are refusing to accept him as your lord and master wa man kafara fa inna allah ghaniyun lil alamin and whosoever is committing kufr then allah subhanahu wa taala doesn't stand in need of, in need of anything of the whole world his ghani anil alamin all the worlds there's no need to be fulfilled for him قل يا اهل الكتاب لم تكفرون بايات الله والله شهيد على ما تعملون say to these people of the book o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam o people of the book why are you denying allah why are you refusing to accept allah as your lord why are you denying the ayat of allah والله شهيد على ما تعملون and whatsoever you are you are doing allah taala is a witness to it قل يا اهل الكتاب لم تصدون عن سبيل الله Say to them, O oh people of the book, why are you obstructing the people from the way of Allah? Man amana tabuna hu evaja. Whosoever comes to believe, you want to create for him conditions of crookedness, so that he should turn towards wrong, towards towards he should go astray from the right path. One to shahada, and you are yours the witnesses that this is the right path. This is actually the deen of Allah. وما الله بغافل لما تعملون ان الله is not unaware of what you are doing يا ايها الذين امنوا ان تطيعوا فريقا من الذين اوتوا الكتاب يردوكم بعد ايمانكم كافرين او يو هو بليف اف يو فولو اف يو ايكت ابون ذا ادفايسز اطاعه ان عربي مينز تو اوبي اند تو ايكت ابون ذا ادفايس اوف سم بيرسون اولسو اف يو اوبي ذيس بيبل some of these peoples whom the book was given before you the christians and the jews if you obey some of them or if you act upon their advice if you lend your ears to them they will take you back from bada imanikum kufara they will take you back from iman to kufr you will again become kafir you will again become unbelieving ya ayuhal ladina amanu in tutiu fariqan min alladina utul kitaba yarudukum bada imanikum kafirin wa kayfa takfuruna wa antum tutla alaykum and how dare you commit kufr how dare you go back from iman to kufr wa tutla alaykum ayatullah and the ayat of allah and the signs of allah are being recited unto you 
وفیکم رسول اینڈ امنگس یو اس پریزنٹ ہز میسنجر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و من یا تسم بلّہ فقد ہل اللہ سرات مستقیم اینڈ ہو سو ایور ہولڈ فاسٹ ٹو اللہ ہو سو ایور کلنگز ٹو اللہ ہو سو ایور ہولڈ فاسٹ ٹو اللہ سبان و تعالی ان ڈیڈ ہی از گائیڈیڈ ٹو دی رائٹ پاتھ ٹو دی اسٹریٹ وے ہیئر دی فرسٹ ہاف آف دس سورا کمس ٹو این اینڈ یو ہیو سین جسٹ لائک سورت البقرہ ان دی فرسٹ ہاف آئیدر دی ڈائریکٹ ایڈریس از ٹو دی فارمر مسلم امہ ہیئر مور پرومیننٹلی ٹو دی کرسچنس ان سورت البقرہ مور ایویڈنٹلی مور اپرینٹلی ٹو دی جیوز ہیئر ٹو دی کرسچنس But after that you, you had find that Ahlul Kitab and it, it includes both. So here also the address mainly has been towards the former Muslim Ummah. And now you know the remaining 10 sections of this surah starting from ayah number 102 till the end. Here only you will find a very brief reference to the Jews in the very end. But the rest is the address to the Muslim Ummah. And the most part of it that is occupied by a commentary on the events of the battle of Uhud. But the first two sections are very important, especially the first three ayat. These three ayat, you know, are so profound. And you can compare them to the five ayat of the 19th section of Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah, inna allaha ma'as sabirin. ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله اموات بل احياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولا نبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الاموال والانفس والصبرات وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون اولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمه واولئك هم المهتدون with these five ayats started the second part of the former surah that is surah al-baqarah where the address was directed to the Muslim Ummah. Here with three ayat, most profound, the full, you know, a, a methodology has been given to the Muslim Ummah, how to perform your duty, the duty of becoming witnesses unto the whole of humanity. What should you do? How will you perform? What are the prerequisites? What are the preconditions that you must fulfill to be able to discharge that mission and that duty that has been put on your shoulders? Now, first three ayat, and I have a big book, you know, Ummat-e-Muslimah ka laya-e amal, Quran-e Hakeem ki in teen ayat ki roshni mein. This is an Urdu, a full book, on this subject, based on these, these only three ayat. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tabutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah as much as you should have. This is the strongest ayah in the Qur'an about, you know, taqwa. اتقوا اللہ حق تقاتے ہیں The companions of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم they were very thoughtful about it. How can a person have the taqwa as much as he should have? As much as is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who can fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And they were perturbed. So when they came to the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم And then you know the ayah in Surah Al-Taghabul was revealed. And on that you know the, the Sahaba, then they were satisfied. They were set to, to rest, you know. And when that, that ayah is, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Have taqwa of Allah as much as you can. So one can go and, and try as much as he is in his capacity. But here you know the wordings are the most strong, strongest wordings. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُ اللَّهَ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And so see to it that you don't die except as Muslims. And what is a Muslim? Muslim is a person who has submitted himself, who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean? If you decide I won't die but as a Muslim, what does it mean? You will never commit any sin because sin actually, what is sin? You are breaking the law of Allah. And maybe... that the cruel hands of death pounce upon you at that very moment. If death comes to you at that very moment, you are not dying the death of, a, of, a, of an obedient person. You have taken liquor. You, are, you have committed haram. And at that very moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts death to you. What will happen? Is your death the death of a Muslim? 
No, this is the death of a sinner. This is a death who is breaking Allah's law, who is in revolt against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is challenging the divine law. So actually this is most profound ayah. And what does it show? If you want to discharge your duties as Muslim ummah, you must be yourself. First of all, you must be practicing Muslim yourself. You must be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yourself. You must be following the injunction of the Sharia yourself. You must have the maximum taqwa of Allah in your heart yourself. If you don't fulfill these conditions and you start people calling people to the deen of Allah, well, you are actually, you are putting the cart before the horse. You must put the horse before the cart, not the cart before the horse. And that is, first of all, you have taqwa yourself. Individuals should be prepared first. Individual characters should be built first. And then actually, then if you want to build a very strong wall, a very strong rampart, what do you do? The bricks must be strong. The, uh, every brick should be very strong. And then you join together. And the mortar, the cement substance should also be very strong. But first of all, the bricks must be strong. So actually this ummah is composed of bricks. Every Muslim is a brick of this ummah. So this brick should be strong and that strength and that is of taqwa and practicing Islam. So this is number one, item number one of the agenda of the Muslim. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Wa atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraku. Now the second level. Now join these bricks together and you hold fast to the rope of Allah, to the cable of Allah, to the cord of Allah, all of you together, wala tafarraku, and don't be disunited. Now these bricks should be joined together, and the cement substance, cementing substance should be very strong, so that the wall is strong, the rampart is strong. Waskuru ni'matallahi alaykum, and just remember and recall, Allah's blessing upon you is kuntum adan, when you were enemies to each other. Allah united your hearts. And you became, due to His blessings, due to His grace, you became brothers. And you were at the very brink of a pit of fire. You were going to fall in that pit of fire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from that. In this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his ayat clear for you so that you are guided, so, you, so that you can get the guidance. Now recall, first step was building of strong character of Muslims based on taqwa and practice of Islam. Second, to join them together, to cement them together, to forge them together into one party, into one ummah, into one group. Now what that Ummah do? That is the third third item on agenda. Now out of you should come and should grow an Ummah. This is the word that I use. Now you have become an Ummah. You have become a party. Hizbullah. That unity, that discipline, that disciplined party. Now what that party should do? They should grow up from amongst you an ummah. Here again three. Now in the last three ayah, third ayah, you have three items. Call to whatever is good. Call to the khair. And the biggest khair in this world is this Quran. This is the biggest blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dawa ilal Quran. Call people towards Quran, to understand Quran, to read Quran, to follow Quran, to act upon Quran. So first of all, the yad'oona ilal khair wa yamuruna bil ma'roof. Now the general term, and enjoining on others whatever is good. Wa yanhoona anil munkar, and forbidding them from whatever is munkar, whatever is evil, whatever is bad. These three items for the ummah. No fourth. You don't require any fourth. For any Islamic revolutionary party, you need not have any fourth program with you. 
First of all, number one, building of individual characters based on taqwa and practice of Islam and practice of Sharia. Number two, disciplined party, disciplined group. Number three, what this party will do? Three, three jobs. Dawat ilal khair, and I understand from that, Dawat ilal Quran. Number two, and let me mention, I forgot to mention, the, to forge unity among the Ummah. Hold fast to the rope of Allah. What is the rope of Allah? The Prophet said it is Quran. Al Quran Hablullahil Mateen. This is the strong rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Quran Hablullahil Mamdud bin Samail al Ard. This is a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This Quran is the rope of Allah which stretches from the earth to the sky. So this is the rope of Allah. So actually unity also you can forge through Quran. Because it gives you harmony in your thinking, in your ideas. And when the ideas are, the, are one, then you will become really united. Now this united party, this group, with, what will it do? Three things. Dawat ilal khair, towards the same Quran. Number two, ya muruna bil maruf. And joining whatever is good, bidding whatever is good. And yanhon alil munkar, and then forbidding for whatever is bad. And only such people will be growing, will be prosperous, will be successful in the hereafter. Who fulfill this three item agenda. And let me add here from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The last item mentioned here in the third ayah, it has again divisible into three. The, the figure three is being repeated here. Three ayat. In the third ayah, three items. The last item, Nahi Anil Munkar, it has three stages according to the hadith. It is from An Abu Sa'id Anil Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an. And it has been included by Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, in his sahih. Man ra min kum munkaran fal yugayyir hu biyadihi. Failam yastatay fa milisanihi. Failam yastatay fa biqalbihi wa zalik agafuli man. Whosoever amongst you sees something which is munkar, which is haram, which is not permissible in the Sharia of Islam. It is your duty to change it, to stop it, to curb it with force, with your hands. And if you can't do it, if you don't have the power or authority or strength or courage to do it, then with the tongue at least. Say to people, don't do it, it is haram, it is not permissible. And even if it is not possible for you, then from heart you must hate it. And this is the this is the weakest position of Iman. So three, three, again three, and again three. This should be the total agenda of any Islamic party. And don't become like those who were disunited and they differ, differed after differed among themselves after clear signs had come to them. And for them is a very big torment. This is the example of the former Muslim Ummah. They had also been given the clear signs. They had been given the Sharia. They had been given the Book of Allah. But then what happened? They, they uh, divided among themselves. They were into sects. So many groups. So don't be like them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. يَوْمَ تَبْيَضْنُ وَجُوهُ وَتَسْوَدْنُ وَجُوهُ on that day, on which some of the faces will be whitened and brightened, and some of the faces will be blackened. The people whose faces will be blackened, they will be the people who committed kufr after iman. It will be said to them, did you revert to kufr after accepting Islam and iman? Now taste, taste this azab this punishment, this torment, because of what you had been doing and the kufr that you, were, you committed. And those whose faces will be brightened, they will be in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will dwell in, in that mercy forever. These are the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we are reciting unto you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bilhaq, with truth, with a purpose. وَمَنْ لَاهُ يُرِيدُ ظُلْمًا لِلْعَالَمِينَ 
and Allah doesn't intend zulm, intend injustice towards the all the worlds. Walillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard, and to Allah belongs everything that is in the heavens and or that is on in the earth. Wa Allahi turja ulubur, and all the matters will finally be returned towards Him. That is for the final judgment. Kuntum khaira ummatin khidat lil nas. O Muslims, now you have become the best ummah that has been created, that has been raised for the people, for the humanity at large. This ayah we can say is the replica of the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا This is how we have made you the best ummah, the middle ummah, so that you become witnesses unto the whole of humanity, and the Prophet and the, and the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes witness over you. Now that was the purpose of the founding of this ummah. Whenever you found a party, First of all, you fix the aims and objects. What are the aims and objects of the party? If you, were, if you are founding an anjuman, a society, what for? You have to lay down, put down in black and white. These are the aims and objects. What for this big anjuman, this big society, this big, big ummah, Muhammad, ummah of Muhammad Sassan, why has, been, has it been founded? What was the aims and objects? The aims and objects. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And in other words, the same thing. قُلْتُمْ أُقْخَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ Now you have become the best ummah. You are qualified. You have qualified for this position of the best ummah. That has been created, that has been raised for the mankind, whole of mankind. أُخْرِيَتْ لِلنَّاسِ What does it mean? Other people live for themselves. For their nations, for their countries. You have to live for the whole of mankind. For the benefit of the whole of mankind. To convey the message of Allah to the whole of mankind. To save, to try to save the whole of the mankind from the fire of hell in the hereafter. That is the mission for which you have to live. You have to live for others. Other people live for themselves, for their own benefits, for, for their own welfare. But you have to work. You have to live and you have to die for the sake of the whole of the humanity to save them from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kuntum khaira ummatin uhidat lil nas ta'amuruna bil ma'roof wa tanhona lil munkar. The same thing. You have to enjoin whatever is good, whatever is correct. Wa tanhona lil munkar. And you have to forbid from whatever is wrong, whatever is unjust. Wa tu'miluna bil Allah and keep faith in Allah. Have tawakkul on Allah. Have confidence on him, and you and you have faith in him. Walau amana ahlul kitab ilakala khair Allahum. And if the people of the book had also believed, it was much better for them. They would have saved themselves on the day of judgment. Minhumul mu'minun. There are some among them who will who who have the iman. A few actually they embraced Islam also. There are in them maybe potentially mu'mins who could have. Accepted and embraced Islam afterwards. Minhumul mu'minun, waqsaruhumul fasiqun. But you know the majority of them, they are the of the rebellious nature. They are the transgressors. La yadurukum illa awa. O Muslim, don't fear them. They won't be able to harm you except some timely, temporary, and trifly hurt. La yadurukum illa azan. Wain yuqatilukum yuwalukumul adbar. And if they dare to go to war against you, to come in the battlefield against you, they are sure to show, show you their backs. They will turn their backs and run away. Sumbalayun sarud, and then they will not be helped from any quarter. Zorebat alayhimu zillah. Now this is the same ayah which we have read in Surah Al-Baqarah. Zorebat alayhimu zillah wal maskanatu wa ba'u bi ghadami min Allah. Zalika bi annahum kanu yakfuruna bi ayatillahi wa yaktuluna nabiyyina bi ghayri al-haq. It appeared there in the end of the seventh section. With a little difference, this ayah and the essence and the subject of matter of this ayah has been repeated here. Zorebat alayhimu zillah. On them, humiliation has been struck. 
humiliation has been heaped ayna ma suqifu wherever they will be found illa bi hablin min allah wa hablin min an-nas now here we have an exception except when they are in the bondage of some covenant with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe they revert to the covenant then you know they will become an exception or they are in the bondage of a covenant or treaty with other people this is the condition today they are living under the protection of the christians they themselves are nothing they can't survive but you know except for the help for help that they are getting from the whole of the christian world now the matter of the fact is the fact of the matter is that they are actually overriding the christian world but this is a very temporary temporary phenomenon very soon the soon the tables are going to be turned but at presently they are controlling the policies of the christian world so to say they have conquered the christian world first of all they used the wasp the white anglo saxon protestant they were their tools they were using them but now they have conquered even the catholic world because as you know the pope had absolved them from the charge of crucif of crucifying jesus by a decree the pope has said that they are not responsible the the jews of today they are not to blame number 2 you know now the vatican has recognized israel and there is going to be a diplomatic mission from vatican to jerusalem for israel so these things you are these events are casting their shadows you know and the things that have been prophesied by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are now coming very soon anyhow the present condition is that they are under the patronage and and protection of the christian world illa bi hablin min allah wa hablin min an-nas wa ba'u bi ghadab min allah and they incurred the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa zurabat alayhim al misk maskana and weakness has been and humiliation has been heaped upon them zalika bi annahum kanu yakfuruna bi ayati allah this is because they have been denying and belying the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yaqtulun al-anbiya bi ghayri haqq and they have been killing and murdering even the prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any reason without any fault of theirs zalika bima asaw wa kanu yaqtadun and to this end they have reached why because they had been breaking and transgressing the limits of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had been crossing the limits of sharia less who sawa again the same aya all of them are not equal less who sawa all of them are not equal not similar min ahli al kitab ummatun qaimatun yatluna ayat al layl ayat allah ana al layl wa hum yasjudun among these people of the book there are some individuals who are upright and who recite during the nights the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they pass their nights in prostrations so there were individuals a few individuals but they were there just as in the muslim ummah there are individuals who are very pious khal khal is qaum mein ab tak nazar aate hain wo karte hain ashq e sahar gahi se jo zalim wuzu there are very pious individuals but you know the hukmul aksar e hukmul kul what is the condition of the maximum number maximum majority of the ummah so the whole ummah will be regarded about on the basis of that majority that is the position here and that was the position 1400 years ago of the jews laysu sawa min ahli alkitab ummatun qaimatun yatluna ayat allah ana layl wa hum yasjudun yu'minuna billahi wal yawmil akhir and they believe in allah and also the last day wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf and they enjoy whatever is good wa yanhauna anil munkar and they forbid whatever is bad wa yusari'una fil khairat and they compete with each other and why with each other in the in, pi- in piety and in acts of virtue maulaika hum min as-salihin and definitely they are from among the pious people wa ma yafalu min khairin falan yukfaru and whatever good they will commit whatever good deeds they will earn they will not be deprived of their reward wallahu alimul muttaqin allah very well knows these people who are very who are really god fearing who are really pious innal ladina kafaru wa ma yafalu min khairin falan yukfaruhu wallahu alimul muttaqin innal ladina kafaru lan tughni anhum amwaluhum wala auladuhum min allahi shay'a 
On the contrary, those who have adopted kufr, who have committed kufr, who have chosen to remain kafir, they, they, their, um, their wealth and properties and their progeny, their children, will not be able to save them from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the people of fire, and they will remain and dwell in, in, in that fire forever. The likeliness of that which they are spending in this world, in this life of this world, it is like a very whirlwind in which there is intense cold, and that wind fell. On the, on the farm, on the tillage of a nation, Zalamu and Fusahum, who had wronged themselves, Fahlakat ho, and they destroyed the whole of the tillage, the whole of the crop. Mama Zalamahumullah, Walakin, Anfusahum Yazlimun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wrong, not wronged these people, but they have been doing wrong to themselves. Now, this infaq, which is mentioned here about those people who, who, who were not believing in Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this can be of two types. Every person does some act of charity, howsoever bad he might be, but he, for the contentment of his own conscience, he does something. But these things are not acceptable in the eyes of Allah unless a person has real iman and he is sincere in committing and in doing that act of charity. So this, this is like, you know, one man might be hoping that I have some, some good deeds with me, but on the day of judgment he finds he has nothing, just as a storm comes and a crop is burnt away. Number two, they were spending their money, lots of their money, for obstructing the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a reference actually to their spending of money, because the Mu'mineen, they were spending for the cause of Allah. And these kuffar, they were spending for the cause of kufr, for their own ideals. So actually this simile is meant for them. These are two possibilities. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tattakhidhu bitanatan min dunikum. O you who believe, don't take intimate friends for yourself, except from your own self. You should have them from the, among the Muslims. La yaalunakum khabala. They don't spare any pains for you. They are always striving to give you pains and injuries. Uh, they are always against you. Vaddu ma'anittum. Whatever hurts you, they like it. Their enmity has become evident from their own mouths. Whatever they have been speaking, whatever they have been saying, from that it is evident that there is enmity in their hearts. And the amount of enmity that their, their hearts are hiding, that is much more great. Only, you know, a tip of the iceberg. Whatever is apparent and evident from what they say, it is the tip of the iceberg. The real iceberg is in their hearts. They have, they have the big and great enmity for you, O Muslim. We have made our ayat, our, our, uh, uh, our guidance clear for you, for in kuntum taqilun, if only you can understand. You are those who love them. But they don't love you. Muslims were of good nature. They thought, you know, about these are human beings. We must be good to all humans. You love them. They don't love you. And you have faith in all the book. All the book. Torah, Injil, and Quran. You believe in all the books. When they meet you, they say, we also believe. Vaida khalaw, and when they are in privacy, Abdu alaykum al anamana, adam ila bin al ghais. They bite at their tips of the fingers from rage over you. Qul mutu bi ghaizikum. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you perish with your own rage. You burn with your own fire of rage and enmity. Inna Allah alimun bizaati sudur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well knows what is there in the hearts of the people. What is there in the chests of the people? In tamsaskum hasanatun tasuhum. If some good thing comes to you, something with which you are happy, it is bad for them. They, it vexes them. Why to simkum sayyatun? If there is some trouble for you, some painful thing happens for you, 
They are very happy. They rejoice. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا But even then, if you show patience, and you, if you have taqwa, two things. وَاسْتَعِنُوا بِسَبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ The same thing here. In تَصْبِرُوا If you have perseverance and patience, and if you have real taqwa, لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْعَىٰ Their conspiracies, their plannings, their plotting, everything will go in vain. They will not be able to do you any permanent harm. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطٍ Allah Ta'ala is encircling, has encircled whatever they are doing. They cannot go beyond that circle. They cannot beyond, go beyond the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference. I